Hi, I'm Laurie Frick. I'm an artist and I use self-tracking data uh, for pattern making in my art practice. Wait. Oops. Make it go back. No, it's not smaller. So I have this idea that if you could live with your data, if you could self-quantify and live in an environment that was the data of you, that it would be soothing and motivating. And so I'm going to explain first how I got there. I, I use scientific data for my art. This is a six foot large collage. It's made out of cut paper and it related to memory. And so I've studied neuroscience for a number of years. And I had this sensibility and this idea that there's a connection with visual rhythm and brain pattern. And so I started using self-tracking as a way to reverse engineer me, my pattern. And I used medical data. And I started taking a look at sleep. And the thing that got me started with sleep is I had this idea that you know the perfect painting was like a 24-hour day you know there's these big quiet areas of sleep and then there's this intense little argument and you know this conflict and then you know there's the perfect ice cream sundae you know so you've got good stuff bad stuff quiet stuff and um, I belong to the New York meetup group and Steve Dean had actually said you know you really should start you know measuring yourself and I tried and it was it, it was really hard and then I found Ben Lipkowitz and so I have used people know phonetic.net. Ben's been tracking his data for six years and what you're looking each horizontal people know this right each horizontal band across the top is 24 hours and blue is sleeping red is online yellow is when he's chatting anyway I could spin forever so then from that I got a Zio 16 months ago and I've been measuring my sleep every night for 16 months and I I ditch the data from Zio because it's awful and I dump it into Excel and you're looking at about a month's worth of sleep and purple is deep sleep and yellow is rim sleep and orange is when I wake up and I I started you know making drawings and I really started researching sleep and I really was fascinated that everything good happens when you sleep you grow you feel better you reorganize your memory I mean everything good happens when you sleep and I started making work based on sleep patterns and activity patterns and you know I started looking at the way that data felt and I really started to get a good response and it felt like the data of, of me and I started to think about the way sleep and activity and I started making things poke out as I felt they were more emotional or more intense and I put this work in a, a show in Los Angeles this past spring and the show in Los Angeles got noticed. It got reviewed in the LA Times. Mm -hmm. uh, it got a new scientist. Um, and this was life changing. There's a YouTube video of it, and you see it in there, but yeah, we're moving on. So after the show, I told my dealer, I said, you know, I'm done with sleep, I'm moving on. And he, he was kind of startled. And um, I found I really couldn't stop measuring my sleep. I was completely hooked. And so I decided to double down. And I started, you know, one is I realized I already was measuring my weight and I became completely convinced that heart rate variability is a big deal. I just got my $25 pulse sensor from Kickstarter. Is that you? No, but I, mine's on the way. <laughs> 25 bucks. This is going to change. Anyway, it's a big deal. It's great. I really, really love it. Um, and I've been, um, I wear a Fitbit. I've been measuring all my walks. And yes, I've washed it. You just have to suck it up and go buy another one. It doesn't work. It sort of works. It doesn't work. Um, then I've measured. I use Manic Time and use everything on my computer. And this is Iographica. You can measure all of your mouse movements. Yeah. Turn on the background. It's really quite beautiful. My tweets. I love um, moodjam.org. You can measure your mood every day 
based on color, which in many ways is more indicative, I think, than words. And I've been measuring my upset stomach every day for five or six months um, using Mercury app, and I love them. And, you know, as an artist, I started thinking, well, why is this so interesting? And I found with the sleep is that, you know, it's mechanical mom. Honey, how'd you sleep? I got a four, mom. <laughs> and, you know, I'm a big believer, particularly tonight, but after the national conference, I am this huge believer in personal science. And I also think, you know, data, I talk to a lot of non-QSers, and I try to explain to them, hey, you've got data, I've got data, fight back. <laughs> but I think the two big ones are the ability to measure the other self, the person that, I really want to eat chocolate cake, and no, you're going to get fat. The, the, you're measuring behavior that's the person that's the unconscious you, the other you. But the thing I think is really compelling, and I'm trying to somehow get this in my art practice, is I think it's fundamental to identity. It's something about I measure, therefore I am. I feel better when I look at my measures. Uh, there's, there's a sensibility of the self and a sense of being. And this is the thing, as an artist, I can kind of get away with this. And I think the quantified self tends to lend toward health. And you know we're puritanical and Calvinist. And it's all good. For the, but I think there's something magical in measuring. And so um, there's this pattern of ourselves. And I, I love this idea that, well, what if we measured ourselves? And really, you know, you know, you know not just convince ourselves, but admit that brain rhythm and our patterns, they're really connected. And so I started to look for something that was non-data visualization, less graphicacy, and I started to look for a metaphor to think about self-tracking from an artist's perspective. And I started looking at non-Western, less you know, ideograms, uh, numerical systems, calendaring systems, and I I found s sort of amazing, beautiful systems. Oh my God, is that seven and a half? Take a, take a couple more minutes and we'll, we'll take it out of the question. Yeah, okay. Navigational stick charts from the Marshall Islands um, measure uh, navigation based on feel and feel of the waves. Inca, this is the you know Machu Picchu. They uh, their whole counting and language systems was based in physical made objects of knotted systems that you tied and untied. And the Mayan hieroglyphs. There's a friend of mine in Austin, Texas, that cracked the Mayan code and realized that Mayan hieroglyphs. When he realized that it was about aesthetics, there's interchangeable glyphs that are based on how something looked. So I really thought about how does it feel. What if it's physical? What, you know, what if it's based on aesthetics? So, you know, what if we had ambient sensing walls that was based on our data? And I started then drawing my walks. And I realized that while I get a sleep score every morning, that they're the numbers, the way your brain processes numbers, you know, it's one, two, three, and then a bunch. And so <laughs> numbers. You know, I'm trying to get away from the frontal cortex and more into the limbic system. And so I started to think about the way my walks, this is a walk around Town Lake, and I started to think about how my upset stomach and the time frame and how it felt. And I then drew a whole bunch of them, and I turned those into laser cut patterns and ins installed them. This is at the Headlands uh, just two weeks ago, and took that and started to install the space with what if you could live in the space. So one whole wall got installed with little color chips for mica that I found at the Recycle Center and the drawings. And I'm installing them in a solo show in January. And uh, I'm really dr drawn to this idea. So if anybody wants to just chat with me, I brought a whole slug of business cards. Chat with me, email me. So thank you. Some questions I have to pause to reflect for a minute when I watch that I'm really um, it, 
affects me a lot because I realize how much has happened in the last four years in Quantified Self. And just the fact that you met Ben and all the, the tools that you showed and so many of them we've seen here and heard stories about people using them, I think it's, it's almost like you just also gave us a little history of, <laughs> of the Quantified Self there, so thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Paul. Well, oh, sorry. No. I, I'm just kind of curious. I, I love your work. I, I, you know, it has that really tactile quality that's really attractive, and it's it's also very crunky rather than like stylized and you know you know airbrushed. Mm -hmm. But I like your work, and it's not about my life. I mean, like I, I remember one time when I was in graduate school, a lot of there was a lot of fMRI research being done, and the first time I saw an fMRI of my brain, I thought it was really fascinating. And I think they could have given me the image of another brain, and I would have still <laughs> fallen in love with my brain. And I kind of feel that, you know, the the meanness of this isn't as important as the the cyclicity and the mm -hmm. kind of mandala complexity that's right. so in training. Right. You're, it's this idea that your rhythm and visual rhythm are connected. It's the proportions of you. There's something basically organic. Um, that's why I think heart rate variability, I was fascinated when you look at heart rate variability, that variability is good. And I realized when I do hand cut pieces is that they're the same but not the same. It's almost like a drum machine. If it's really, right, if it's really a digital drum machine, it doesn't sound as good as a real one, right? You need a little bit of error in it. And there's something about it that feels um, human. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm so no, used to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Doing so, well, well, you know, because you have to go through the top pretty quickly. There's there's something you mentioned that I was really intrigued that I wanted you to kind of expand on. So you were talking about being in a room which is kind of um, knows your data and is kind of alive in the sense that it's interacting. And, and I was wondering if you were visual. And I really like this idea that of of like being in a space that's changing based on how I'm feeling or, or right. see, maybe I'm feeling energized and so right. it's more, more dynamic. Um, did you also think in terms of that that you could help like say help your wellness, say you're prone to anxiety and certain patterns are calming, I mean could so a feedback, a kind of a feedback yeah. loop. Yeah, I mean, is that does it change your behavior? Has your art changed yeah. your behavior? I thought it would. I thought what you need is that you want it not just to reflect you, but you want it to counterbalance you. Precisely. That's yeah. what. That's what I thought you were. Yeah. Where you're going with that? I think yeah. that's a really interesting idea. But for it to do that, it needs. You have to have a mechanism for the house to know. How are you doing right now? <laughs> right? It has to have somehow, I mean, how will your wall, how can your wall, like, okay, for example, I have a son who has anxiety. And as a mom, I mean, I, I have, I personally have special wired neurons. Like no one else, I see that he's starting to ramp up. And if I can catch it before he truly, you know, flips out, you know, just a touch, a word, I'm really good at this, and I can turn him around before he even is aware that he, that, that this was going to happen. And that's because I'm, I'm I'm his mom, and you know teachers can't do this for him. I mean, it's re only someone who's like really psychological, like in tune. And and so I like the idea that before you get into that state that extreme state, because he's not even, he's, he's too young, he's not self-aware, um, that suddenly the walls could, maybe purple's your color that calms you or whatever, mechanical and um, it would just happen. <laughs> mechanical but, but then, <laughs> Exactly, I love that. But, um, but then, so, so, now I, so now I'm left with the big question of how, how would the room know? Well, I've been really looking at things that passively measure, the things that are really simple. That's why I yeah. think a Zio, a Fitbit, my GPS, oh, my tracks, right? So everything is my clothes, everything starts to sense. I really think we're really, really close to right. having it. I mean, the devices are small, right. I think they'll be invisible. Because like maybe his movements are more erratic. You know, you, may, you know, he starts 
I mean, that's the whole point is the devices are getting smart and small, and then they'll be, yeah, they're integrated. Like the idea that you can passively sense, yeah. right. Might indicate. I think we have time for one more. Mark. I am so fascinated with the nature of the relationship that people are developing with things that they are not visible and are not sensible, but are, are, are not sensible in terms of the human sense, but are sensible in terms of our tools or what others see about us. And it's the creation of the relationship or the intention to create certain types of relationships that I've been watching in this group over and over and over again. And there's been some incredible words tonight. Feel your data. That I accept that, you know, and, and everybody, every, each of the speakers has been talking about that. But I thank you so much for, for articulating this in yet another way. But I'm wondering, what kind of relationship do you want with your art or, or with your, your inner unknown? Well, it's a, it's a great question, like what are you after? I have this idea that artists can anticipate science. I think they contribute, I think artists can bring something to a scientific idea. You know, I've been experimenting, so I look at this as the same kind of scientific method. This is a quest, I'm experimenting. I think there's something in this. And I can, I can take leaps. Um, where a scientist might not because I can when I hit something hard it just I can go into art world science and leap over it <laughs> Can you talk about what it feels like what what you want to feel like what you want to so I'm trying to get at the The emotive language as opposed to you know boy. This is this is the yeah, yeah. relationship with science But your, your relationship with yourself. How is that changing? And how are you making choices to change that relationship with yourself through practice? Well, just the measuring uh -huh. is causing me to be, um, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, it's with the words, because we're in a Western thought, it gives me a sense of centeredness. It makes me feel more um, in this world. It makes me grounded, right? And when I look at the data and I make work from it, I think it's soothing. What a great meeting. Thank you all <laughs> for coming. And thank you.